In this video, I'm going to go over the Blueprint Thread Safe Update Animation function inside of the Item Anim Layers Base Blueprint. It'll be a shorter video, but it's something I want to cover before I go into any specific animation state for the main anim graph and it, the layers associated with it. I'm going to start by opening up the Animation Blueprint Item Anim Layers Base. And I'm going to close out of this here and just start from a blank slate here. And I'm going to open this function, Blueprint Thread Safe Update Animation. It's the same function that um, the main animation blueprint uses in place of an event graph. This one does the same thing for the same reason. Now, before I cover any individual states, I want to go over what this does here. So there are a couple of functions I want to cover before we get to going over any specific animation layers in this blueprint. So the first thing we see here in this update animation function is a property access node, which is calling a function get main anim bp thread safe. And we can go ahead and open that function up and take a look at it. It's just marked as pure and thread safe right here. It returns the animation blueprint mannequin base. So it returns the class of the main animation blueprint for the project. And what we're doing is, well, what it's doing is it's using the property access node to call the get owning component function and to get its anim instance. It is then casting to the mannequin base to see if the anim instance of the owning component or mesh of this animation blueprint is the mannequin base. And if that is true, it is returning the mannequin base that it can be used however it needs to be used. If that is false, it does not return anything. Right now it is checking if it's not equal to null, which is, so it's essentially saying, if it has successfully returned to the main animation blueprint, then do all of this stuff. So next we have this update blend weight data function, which is using this delta time, um, variable here which is actually just the input from for this blueprint thread safe update animation so this function here this is the first time i'm looking at it while i'm recording this video appears to be setting some of the blend weights for um, a hip fire override so we have a branch here and we have an or so we have two things that can be true that could and if one of them is true, it'll cause this branch to fire off this true execution pin and set the hip fire body override weight to zero and the aim offset blend weight to one, which would mean that you are not hip firing and you should be blending in the aim offset. Meaning the character is not hip firing and the aim offset is being blended in because they are aiming. So the first thing is checking is whether or not to raise weapon after firing when crouched is true. This raise weapon after firing when crouched is a setting for the animation blueprint. And if it is not true, and if we are crouching, then we will set the hip fire override weight to zero and the aim offset blend weight to one. The other condition we check for is whether or not is testing for, um, so if we're not crouching, and we're aiming down our sights, and we're on the ground, then it will also execute this code. But if this is false, but if either of these conditions are false, which would mean that we are not aiming down our sights, or we're not on the ground, or, well, there could be a number of reasons here. It's going to run through a second branch. It's going to check the time since we fired our weapon. If it is less than raise weapon after firing duration, which is another setting for the animation blueprint, it will execute the true, which is going to set a hip fire upper body override weight to one and an aim offset blend weight to one because you're firing and you're firing from the hip. Now, if we are aiming down the sights and we are crouching or we are not on the ground, it is going to use the hip fire upper body override weight and the aim off, it's going to set both of those to one again. It looks like um, 
because this is where you're aiming down the sights, but you're not standing up, or you are in the air. And if an animation has a curve that named apply hip fire override pose with a value greater than zero, it'll also execute this code here. If this is false, it is going to interpolate to the hip fire upper body override weight to zero with an interpolation speed of one. So I'll go ahead and read this comment. Use aiming aim offset when we are idle or we have root yaw offset. Use relaxed aim offset during regular motion. So we're getting the absolute value of the root yaw offset and then it's testing if it is less than 10, if that is true and we have acceleration, then we're going to pick A as our input, which is the current hip fire upper body override weight. If this is false, so if our root yaw offset is greater than 10 and we do not have acceleration, then we're going to choose 1 as our input. We have an aim offset to blend weight variable here, which we're interpolating to the target. We're either interpolating it to the current hip fire upper body override weight, so we are transitioning out of our hip fire override pose, or this and outputs a true. And it outputs, again, it outputs a true when our root yaw offset is less than 10, if its absolute value is less than 10, and if we have acceleration. So essentially, if we're moving, we're going to pick A and interpolate our blend weight out of hip fire upper body override weight. I'm going to interpolate out. We're going to interpolate our aim offset blend weight to the current hip fire upper body override weight value and it itself is currently being interpolated to zero but if this is false so if we're standing still it is going to interpolate the aim offset blend weight to one and i think it'll be easier to get a more full understanding of what the heck this is doing and what it's all related to as we get a better understanding of the animation graph as a whole because we can follow some of the logic here, but at the same time, there's some context that's missing because these variables don't need used in every state. They don't need to be plugged into every state. So not every bit of logic about whether or not you're aiming or doing this or that needs to be considered because some of it might be state driven. I'm not entirely sure at this point, but I think, I believe that as we get further into this blueprint, it'll become easier to understand this function Moving on, we have update jump fall data, which is a much simpler function. We are testing whether or not we're falling. If we are falling, we take our current time falling, we add delta time, and we set a new time falling. If we're not falling, we check if we're jumping. If that is true, we set time falling to zero. So that we are resetting time falling whenever we go back to uh, this branch when uh, is falling is true and execute this chain of nodes or well, this single node here. Finally, a function is called titled update skeletal control data. So for this function, for this function, we're essentially getting the value of a curve, two curves, um, a disable hand IK for the left hand and a disable hand IK for the right hand. And we're also going to override that curve with a global disable hand IK Boolean setting for the animation blueprint. We're going to clamp that between 0 and 1 and set a hand IK right alpha and a hand IK left alpha. And that's it for blueprint thread safe update animation. The next function that you'll see all over the place inside of this blueprint is get movement component, which is very similar to the get to main anim blueprint thread safe node. We're just using we're just using property access to uh, try get pawn owner. We're getting the movement component from the pawn owner. We're testing whether or not that movement component is the character movement component by using a cast. If it is, we're returning the character movement component. If it is not, we, re we return null. All right, everyone. So I'm going to end the video out here. I think it'll end up being a bit shorter than the previous two in this series, but it, I just wanted to cover this 
blueprint thread safe update animation function and the functions contained within it for the item anim layers base animation blueprint. Before I got further into any individual state, we'll be covering the idle state in the next video.